Amen. Welcome to City Hills, everyone. Before, can we just give it up for all of our guests that are here today in the room? Amen. Thank you so much for being here. You may be seated. My name is Derek. If we've had never had a chance to meet, and I'm the next generation pastor uh, here at City Hills Church, along with my wife, Ashley, and get the privilege to lead the the next generation, zero to 30, as I like to say, and um, just incredible what God is is doing in the next gen and just all around this place. As you heard, uh, 21 Days of Prayer is going on right now, and we are going to end 21 Days of Prayer big with a baptism service on August the 21st. And so if you have been, yeah, yeah, come on for anybody who wants to be baptized. Um, we'll, we would love to do it then. You can get baptized anytime here at City Hills, but that's just a time where we just push for baptism and, and, um, we would love uh, love to baptize you on on that day, and and also uh, for all the middle and high school students that are here in the room, we have city night this Wednesday at six o'clock right here in this in this auditorium right there in the lobby, and and so if you've never been to city night, come check it out. It's such a great night. We have games, food, and uh, worship, and a word small group time, and uh, it's it's just an incredible incredible night, and your kids will love it. And uh, yeah, we would we would love to love to see you. But we've been we've been in this series of Jonah the past few weeks, going through the book of Jonah, and we we learned in uh, in Jonah chapter one, Pastor Brandon preached about the the run, how Jonah was running from the call that God had put on his life, and he was running from the fact that God wanted him to preach to to Nineveh. And he didn't want nothing to do with that, so he ran, ran away. And then last week was the the big, you know, the the big moment. Like if it was a movie, it was the big moment. He gets thrown, you know, into the ocean, swallowed from a fish. He's in the belly of the whale, and he begins to cry out to God. And then Pastor Brandon, we he ended it on the cliffhanger, right? Jonah gets spit. If you're if you ever binge watch the movies that make you like go to the next one, it's because it's a cliffhanger. You know, Jonah gets spit up on the beach and then it's love God, love people, change your world. We'll see you next week. And you're like, but wait a minute, what's happening? You know, we're like, don't, don't read your Bible. We want you to, we want you to find out next Sunday. Just kidding. Uh, bad joke. Sorry. But, um, but you know, this week, you know, Jonah's now there spit up on the beach and now what? And we find out that Jonah gets a, a second chance. How many, how many ever need a, a, need a second chance every once in a while? Come on, husbands. You say the thing and you're like, I wish I had a, a machine that could go back in time and grab my words and put them back in my body and never let them come out again. Right? You do things, you say things, and you're like, oh, I wish I had a, a second chance. And there's, there's moments where you just, you just know you done, you done messed up. There's a tone that comes out, and you're like, oh, I just, I wish I had a second chance. Not too long ago, my wife and I, we were having a, a big Friday night for the Frymeyers, which means possibly going out to eat, which that's maybe hit or miss because we have three boys and going out to eat with three boys is, is, is a little a little crazy. Um, but the other part of usually Friday nights is that we return all the things that my wife purchased that week. Because, <laughs> you know, ladies, you don't like to shop as much as you like to return the items that you bought. And I, I don't get it. Like as, as a man, you know, we will research a, a, an item of clothing for weeks at a time and we've made our decision and we will keep that article of clothing for 10 years until you make us throw it away, until it has a smell that will not wash out. That's my, that's my baseline for throwing away a shirt. The, the, hey, it got clean, but it don't smell clean. It's trash time. But no, not ladies. No, you guys will, you guys like to buy things and, and to return them. And I, I, I'm confused because, but you, you saw it at the store. And you liked it at the store. Yeah, but the lighting in our room is a little different. It's, the color is just not right. I'm like, all right. So we were doing that. We were doing the, the return trips, and we were sitting in the parking lot, and, and I didn't want to go in, and so my, my boys are in the car, and, and they're fighting in the background, but I was, I was in like the parent mode, like y'all, y'all know what it is, parent mode when you're like totally zoned out, right? It's like in the movies when somebody gets knocked out and you come back to with ringing in your ears, right? That was, that was me. It was ringing in my ears of my kids fighting, and if, if you're here today and you have no children, you cannot judge this right now. You have no kids. 
You're not allowed to judge. I'm just going to a little uh, pastoral teaching right now. Uh, if you're at a restaurant, you have no kids, no judging allowed because they're wild and we do everything we can to keep them quiet for the moment. But I came to and two were fighting the back over the Nintendo Switch, right? And I, and I came to, it was like that moment of like, oh, they've been fighting for a while. And I said, give me that Switch. And I start, you know, I start saying the things that are not true at all. You're never playing the Switch again. I'm locking the switch up in a dark dungeon. You'll never see it. You're never going to give me that thing. Matter of fact, I'm playing the switch. What is this game? Oh, Mario. I've been playing Mario since 1992. You can't tell me nothing. I'm a, I'm a grown man. Give me this thing. and Nothing like Mario, right? When we were growing up, it's two buttons and a cross. That's all you needed. That's all it was. Not this game. Mario Odyssey. This was wild. It's like, you can go anywhere, 3D, all this stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. Start new game. And I hear from the back, my son, who was playing the game, Dad, did you start a new game? Of course I started a new game. I'm a grown man. Your father. I do what I want. Dad. And then I heard it. I heard, the, I heard it in his voice and my heart sunk. Dad, did you really start a new game? And I'm thinking, certainly. I mean, we're like far into the 2000s by now. Certainly game save. Like back in the day, you could save a game. Certainly it would save Dad. That game was not saved. You reset my entire game. I had 998 moons. If I got to a thousand, I was going to unlock a world that nobody in the history of Mario has ever seen before. And you just ruined it. It is, I mean, he is just so, so upset. And I'm like, oh Lord Jesus, I need a second. I wish it was 21 days of prayer because it would be on my prayer card. Can we please get the Mario game back, Lord? Because I messed up and my wife gets in the car. She's like, what's going on? I said, I made a, I made a mistake. I, I was like that point. Fathers, you know, parents, you know, where you're like on the high, you're, you got the high ground and you're all like, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, oh no, like the Lord hum, humbles you quickly. That's where I was at. And I said, I don't know what we got to do, but we got to get this game back. I know nothing about this. I know. So my wife, she's, she's a creative director. So she knows all about the technologies and the Googles and the YouTubes. Right. And so I said, you got to figure, we got it. You, I said, we got to figure that out. That means she's got to figure it out. You got to figure out how to restore this game or I'm never, he's going to look at me as a terrible father for the rest of his life. He's going to go to counseling because of this game, because of what I have done to him. And so thankfully, because my wife is so smart and so wonderful to what the devil thought he had taken from my son, we got it restored in Jesus name. As silly, as silly as it is, there's times in your life where you know, oh Lord, I need a second chance. And that's what we looked at Jonah last week. He was, he was the video game done got erased, heart sunk moment. It says this in Jonah 2. He's in the belly of this great fish. It says, you cast me into the deep water and I sank to the bottom of the sea. Everything was churning around me and I was engulfed by powerful waves that overwhelmed me. Then I thought I've been banished from God's presence and I'll never get to see your holy temple again. How many felt like that? I'm banished. I'm at the lowest of the lows. I I feel like I'm alone. I'm in the dark. I'm never going to experience God's presence again. So I was scared to death, afraid I was drowning with water, choking me and seaweed wrapped around my head. I kept sinking down to the mountains that rise off the ocean floor. I felt locked in a prison forever. He's like, God, I messed up. I messed up. I shouldn't have ran. I shouldn't have done that. I should have been obedient the first time. And in his desperation, he gets spit up on the beach. And one of the greatest verses in all of the Bible comes right here in Jonah 3 and 1. Because we've all been there and we've all needed to experience it. It says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Can I tell you that we serve a God who specializes in the second time. He specializes in the second chance. We serve a second chance God. Look at some of the people in the Bible that God gave second chances to. Jacob, 
He was a cheater. He cheated his brother out of his inheritance. Moses murdered a man. Rahab was a prostitute. She ends up being in the line of Jesus. And then we've got Samson who just loved prostitutes and he wasted his talent, ends up in prison. We got David who commits adultery, has, his, has uh, the, the lady he commits adultery with killed, the husband killed. Peter denies Jesus three times at his arrest. The uh, uh, Apostle Paul murder, is, a, is a, basically a Christian terrorist and he's terrorizing Christians and, and then he gets he, he gets you know thrown down off his horse and, and and this revelation totally redeemed a second chance. Zacchaeus was a hated dishonest businessman, but we serve a God who gives second chances. So if you're here today and you feel like you've messed up, you made the greatest mistake of your life, you, you messed up last night before you even came here, can I tell you, we serve a God who gives second chances. That people may have written you off. Can I tell you, Jonah was written off. My man got thrown from a ship into the ocean. The people throw him into the ocean. Think about this, back in the day. Never seen this before. And all of a sudden, this big old fish gobbles up this dude. You know what the first thing those sailors are telling when they get to Tarshish? Hey, you know that prophet Jonah? Yeah, we've heard of that guy. He's kind of famous. Yeah, he dead. He dead, dead. He's super dead. He belly of the fish dead. RIP Jonah, hashtag, like, GoFundMes are getting set up for his family. Like, my man is going viral before there was such a thing as gone viral. Like, he is gone. He has been written off. Everybody has been writ, wrote, uh, wrote him off. And here's the thing. You may have feel like you have been written off. Family's written you off. Friends have been written you off. Maybe... You have written yourself off, but can I tell you that God has not written you off? That you may have fallen, but that God has not written you off. You may have sinned, you may have messed up, but can I tell you, Jonah chapter 3 verse 1 brings me hope and should bring you hope too. And it says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. You may have messed up, but God by his mercy and his grace will come back around a second time. You may have failed, but can I tell you that your failure is not final. You may have be in a place in the journey where God is just setting you up for a comeback. You may feel like you are in a whale's belly, seaweed wrapped around your forehead, all alone in a place. But can I tell you, the whale's belly is just a temporary holding place for where God is taking you to. That there is a second chance. That the word of the Lord is coming around a second time. You see, the God that we serve, he doesn't just see where you are right now. He sees where you are going. The God that we serve, he doesn't see just what you have done. He sees what you are going to do. We serve a God who gives out second chances. Lamentations chapter three, one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. The, the whole book is depressing. Like there's not much hope in the book of Lamentations. It's called Lamentations. And there's this little glimmer of hope right in the middle of the book. The prophet's crying out, we're, we're going to be slaves forever. This is horrible. This is what's happening. God, you forgot about it. And then he says this, the faithful love of the Lord, it never ends. Whatever you are walking through today, the faithful love of the Lord, it never ends. You don't understand. I'm in the belly of a whale. The faithful love of the Lord, it never ends. His mercies, they never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Can I tell you that you woke up to fresh mercy today so that you can learn from the mistakes of yesterday? That if you are here today and there is new mercy and you've experienced new grace, don't go running back in the belly of the whale. Like Jonah didn't get spit up on the beach. And then it said, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. And he's like, no, I'm not going to those people. Well, where are you at? Come swallow me up. God's like, you better be listening because next time it's going to be a shark. Shark week was last week, everybody. Those sharks be coming up out of the water. They're called basking sharks as well. <laughs> See, here's the thing. When the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, his response wasn't like the first time. And here's, if you're taking notes, the second chance is for a different response. It was the same exact word, but the only difference was Jonah's response. 
It said the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to Nineveh. Preach the message that I have given to you. Same exact word. Nothing changed. But Jonah's response. Jonah 3 and 3. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord. And he went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. The only difference between the first word and the second word was Jonah's obedience to God. You see, God gives us grace and mercy, but our response to grace and mercy is obedience. Look what Paul says to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 6 and 1. We are workers together with God, so we beg you. Somebody say, beg you. We beg you, do not let the grace that you receive from God be for nothing. Jonah, I swallowed you up with a great fish. It was my grace because you thought you had a, a, a good plan, but I, I'm going to go ahead and change that plan by my grace and my mercy. I'm going to spit you up, and now I want you to have a different response. Don't let it be for nothing. You see, God will give you new grace and new mercy each and every day. That's what the Bible tells us. But he won't give you new instructions until you have been obedient to the original plan. We always, we pray, God, give me a fresh word. I need, I need something fresh from heaven. Give me a fresh word. I want that fresh loaf, Krispy Kreme donuts coming down, hot loaf, to Texas Roadhouse rolls. It's 1130. I'm hungry. And God's saying, hey, you know that old word that I gave you, that bread that's now stale? It's not stale because of me. It was fresh when you received it the first time, but you put it up on the shelf and now there's some, now there's some stuff growing on it and, and you're going to have to scrape it off with a, with a knife, with a butter knife. It still will feed you because we always want the fresh word and God's saying, I'm waiting for you to be obedient to the new word or to the, to the old word. See, see the mercy and grace of God is unlimited, but the instruction, the new instructions are contingent. See, some are waiting for a different Nineveh. Week one, Pastor Brandon said, what is your Nineveh? Remember, Jonah doesn't want to go. He, 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 the, old, the, the old racist pros, prophet is what he is. I, I don't want to mess with those people. I don't like those people. I don't even want them to repent. Like, I'm glad you're going to destroy them. So I'm going to go and do what I want to do. And, 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 and God said, I'm coming to you a second time, but it's going to be the same exact Word. See, some are waiting for a different Nineveh, but you're going to wait forever. And I'm, I'm telling you, it, it, mercy and grace, like I said, mercy and grace is new every morning. That's, that's, not, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you ain't saved. I'm not saying you're not a good human being. I'm saying that God has a plan and a calling for your life that is specific to you. And he's saying, look, this is what I've called you to. And if you want something new, you're going to have to do what I've called you to do the first time. And so that, because it's part of my plan, his, his callings and, and his giftings are without repentance, the Bible says. He's like, well, until you do that thing, then nothing else is going to change. See, the second chance, praise God, is for a different response. Why? Obedience is pleasing to God. Obedience is pleasing to God. Your obedience doesn't change his love for you. I love my children. I love my children unconditionally. I love them more than anybody else can love them besides the Lord. But I'm pleased with them when they are obedient to what I'm asking them to do. Because usually I am asking them to do something that is good for them. Get in the car. First thing I say, buckle up. Why? Because when we get in a car, if we got in an accident, uh, I, I want them to be safe, right? Don't punch your brother in the face. Why? Because I don't want to raise, you know, a, a, a terrible person. Right? Don't, don't do a cartwheel in the public bathroom re restroom after you've washed your hands because you're probably going to get a weird sickness that we've got to go to the hospital. <laughs> right? Don't lick your brother. It's just weird. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you on that one. It's just weird. Like, don't punch people unexpectedly in the lobby. You're a pastor's kid. It looks bad. So I'm sorry. Hashtag PKs. We love you. 
but I'm, te- I'm giving them instructions because I know it's, it's me in my finite, carnal, just a lack of wisdom mind as a father. If I know what's good for my kids, how much more if with what God is asking you to do, knowing it's better for you, then how much more should we be obedient when God is asking us to do something that he knows what is best for us? See, there are some things in life that just direct obedience is best, right? If I tell my, tell my kids, will you take out the trash? And they're like, well, dad, I think I'm going to need to pray about it. So you better pray about hurrying up. <laughs> you know, you, well, dad, I'm just not feeling it today. I've took a, I'm taking a day for self-care. You better, your self care is you live in this house for free and get food. And your mom buys you clothes that she may return later. Just what it is. Deal with it, son. Hey, there are things you don't have to pray about. They started that message. You don't need to pray about that. You just need to be obedient. There are things in scripture we don't have to pray about. You, if, if you've been working it out, trying, thinking about, do I need to pray about getting baptized? You, let me just go ahead and tell you something. You don't need to pray about it. It's, it's been commanded in scripture. You should just go do it. You should just sign up on baptism Sunday or do it right now while we're preaching. Just go back there. We'll figure it out. Jump in the tank. Somebody will get back there and baptize you. Like we, we will make it happen. You don't got to pray about it. Like you don't have to l- pray about leading a small group. You're like, wait a minute, what do you mean? You maybe pray about the kind of group. Maybe you need to pray about where it's at, like all of that. But you don't have to pray about discipling people. As Christians, we are, we are called to make disciples. It's already been commanded. It's already a command that has went forth. So you don't have to pray about it. You don't have to pray about serving in the city on Surf Saturday and Surf Day. When we have second Saturday of every month, we have Surf Saturday. And you don't have to pray about it. Why? Because we've been called to be salt and light in the community. It's already in the word to go out and be salt and be light. So you, there's things that we don't have to pray about. You can just go out and you can obey. You see, the word is coming around a second time so that we can have a different response. So that we, by his grace and his mercy, can have a different response. Here's the third thing. The second chance is because God knows best. Like I already said, Jonah did not want to go preach to them. So he said, Psh, I got myself a good plan. And all the, everybody that's ever been a, a preacher in their life or in ministry in their life, they understand Joan. He had this plan. He's like, I'm tired of being a preacher. These people don't, these people don't want to listen to me. I'm going to, I'm going to go to Tarshish. It's another, it's another port town. I'm going to get me a beach house. I'm going to be a YouTube preacher. Forget these people. I'm going to no city. I'm going to YouTube. That's what I'm going to do. And he, he goes and he says, I got this good plan for my life. I'm, I'm sure that Jonah thought it was a good plan. So he gets on the ship and he does what he thinks is good. But God, in his sovereignty and his wisdom and his goodness, will allow us to pass up what we think is good because he knows best. How many has ever been to Bucky's? Anybody? Oh, yeah. Praise God. Hey, they're about, to, they're about to build one over there on that, that uh, Sevierville exit. It's going to be like the biggest one in the world. Here's the thing about Bucky's, guys. I can't explain it to you. It's like the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. You got to experience it. And I know this from my own experience because when I was in college, my best friend was from Houston, Texas. And this was way back in the day because Bucky's comes from Texas. He's like, let me tell you about this gas station called Bucky's. And I'm like, bro, you're getting real excited about a gas station. He's like, you don't understand. There's hundreds of pumps. There's brisket. There's, there's all of these things, right? I had no idea what he was talking about until I went. And I was like, this is like Disney World. <laughs> They've got their own mascot. They got a statue out in front. There is hundreds of pumps. There is so many things and they've gotten really smart, right? They market it. They're, they're so good. They got these billboards. I'm sure all the other gas stations in America are so mad. They will market like a hundred miles away and it'll say, ain't no potty like a Bucky's potty. And it's true. They're super clean. They're like personal stalls. Um, there's like a guy just waiting. He's like, would you like a mint, sir? And you're like, yes, I can't believe I'm in a gas station right now. And 
Ashley and I, we were leaving from Ford Conference in Atlanta, and we were on a quarter of a tank, and it said, Bucky's 100 miles. I said, we can make it in Jesus' name. (laughs) And here's the thing. I passed up a lot of good gas stations. I could have gotten gas at the Sitco, at the Shell. They would have been fine. I could have stopped, and I could have got an energy drink. As, as you can see, I do not need. But I usually drink caffeine until I'm shaking. That's the only way to do it. Why else would you do it any other way? You can get chips at a gas station. But you know what you can get at Bucky's? You can get a new wardrobe. You can get a grill for your home. You can get treats for your pet. You can get artwork to put on the wall of your home. You can get fresh sliced brisket, y'all. And it ain't just like kind of good. It's like restaurant good. It ain't gas station good. It's good good. So I would pass up good options for the best option. Can I tell you that's what God does for us in our life? You're like, God, maybe you're in this place and you're like, that relationship I was in, I thought it was going to be good. I, I thought he was a good option. I thought she was a good option. I don't know why that didn't work out. He said, I'm letting you pass it up because there's something better in the future. You're thinking to yourself, I thought this career was going to work out. I thought this job situation was going to work out. It was a good option. And God's, and God's like, yes, it's a good option, but I've got the best option for you if you will just allow it, if you will take the second chance and move forward in Jesus' name. He's got a better option because God's plans are better than ours plans. God's will for your life is better than your will for your life that God's timing is better than our timing. He knows what is best for us. Proverbs 19, 21 says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. We got a lot of good plans, y'all. We got good plans and many of our plans, we can do this, we can do that, but it's the Lord's purpose. God, I wanna do what you have called me to do. And it says, when Jonah heard the word the second time, he immediately started walking toward Nineveh. There was no delay. I had a preacher say it like this. Don't delay, obey today. Don't delay, obey today. Preachers, we're kind of like, we're, we preach, but we're also kind of like rappers on the side too, so there you go. There was no delay. He said, my, word, my, my Lord, I, I, I got swallowed up by a great fish. I got a second chance in life. I am going to take advantage because here's the thing. If you're taking notes, the second chance is so others can have second chances. Jonah 3, 4 says, Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The word proclaiming here could also be translated Warning. See, we warn people because we love them. In our culture today, warning someone about something is, is seen as, as hateful or, or, oh, you can't tell me this is, this is what I know. This is my truth. And you're like, no, 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 I want to give you the truth from the word of God. I want to warn you. Did you know that in the New Testament that has over 100 scriptures saying that we as believers have responsibility to warn the people we love? Warnings are not a bad thing. How many has been pulled over by the cops, everybody? Yeah, like, like a month ago, it happened to me. I was going to a funeral wake, and I was the preacher, and I missed my turn. What do you do when you miss a turn? You speed up. What do you do when you just drive regular? You speed up. But anyway, missed my turn. I was, it was at Kodak, Tennessee, which all I knew was Bass Pro Shops, praise God. But this wasn't Bass Pro Shops Kodak. This was Kodak Kodak. Like, we were driving around these back roads, and, and I go by this, this church. A church! A church! He was sitting there, just waiting. Lights come on. I pull over. And he's like angry immediately as he pulled over. Like opens his car door, like hits my Jeep with the car. I'm like, whoa, Lord, help us. Lord, I got my kids in the back. I'm like, am I getting arrested today? And pulls up. First thing, roll down the window. He's like, your tent looks a little dark. And I'm like, I'm thinking in my head. I'm like, look. Like, I'm not, I'm not like super young, but like, I'm pretty young for like a, to be a preacher and like we're in Kodak. So, and so I'm probably real young for to be a preacher. I was like, I don't know if he's going to believe me, but I said, sir, I know you may not believe this. And the other part of this is, you know, I don't have a Southern accent, which makes it, you know, it makes everybody more reputable around here. Right. <laughs> Like, I've said this a lot. I wish I had a little twang for my preacher voice. Like, Pastor Brandon's got that beauty, that preacher. It's like a perfect twang, too. He don't have real twangy twang, but he's like just a little slight Kentucky twang. 
I'm working on it. One day I'm going to get up here. I'm going to be like, praise God, City Hills. How we doing? It's going to be awesome. But anyway, it's in my mind. But, but I'm thinking of all these things because he's like, I mean, he's mad. He's literally mad about how I pulled over. He's like, sir, like, why didn't you do this? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, you never know. Do I go right away? Do I wait for the safe spot? I don't know. He's mad. I didn't wait for the safe spot. I'm in the middle of the country road. And then he's like, license and registration, takes the license and the registration, you know, goes back. I don't never know what they're doing. It takes so long. I told him, but I told him, I said, sir, I, I really am. I promise I'm a, I'm a minister. I'm doing a funeral. Like I need to get there. Like if you need to follow me and write me a ticket, like I just, I'm already late. It looks pretty bad for the preacher to be late. Really bad if the preacher comes late with the lights behind him, which I was debating. Like, do I just keep going and they, like arrested right there? Wild. But so I'm waiting and comes back, right? And he's like, well, I'm just going to get you this warning. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Like warnings are good. Like warning people about danger is good. Like the police officer had my best interest in mind. He's like, dude, you can't go this fast. You're going to hurt somebody. You're going to hurt themselves. That's what warnings are for. We warn people that we love. And the warning is because God wants to give them a second chance. That Jonah's message, it's the, it's the so shortest message in history. It's the worst message ever. Like for all the prophets, it's literally just this. 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. What if I was like, be obedient to what God said or in this next 21 days or you know what's going to happen. Go love God, love people, change your world. We love you, City Hills. He'd be like, that was the strangest message. But that's all he said. The other prophets, it's lamenting and crying and heartfelt. Jonah's still real. He's still like, I'm just going to do what you said. But guess what? Even in our reluctant obedience, God can use it. Because if you've been forgiven, then we must forgive others. If you have received mercy, then we must be merciful. There's nothing worse when, when somebody has received grace and mercy and then they you turn it around and they're not, they're not graceful and merciful themselves. We, we, we must forgive. We must love people. Why? Because we have been given a second chance so that other people can get second chances. Look what happens. Jonah 3 and 5. It says, The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. And when Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. It's a visual illustration of repentance. It, the, the sackcloth would have been like wiry goat's hair, just uncomfortable, like making yourself uncomfortable. Like we're, we're, we are repenting for, for what God has, has said to us. And it says in the last verse of the Jonah chapter 3, when God saw what they did, and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Because of Jonah's obedience, an entire city is saved. And we're not talking about one light town city. It said it took him three days to walk through Nineveh. Three days preaching to Nineveh. Can I ask you this? I wonder what... Or who is on the other side of your obedience to what God is asking you to do? Like I said, Jonah chapter 1, the very first installment of Jonah, Pastor Brandon said, what is your Nineveh? What is it that God is asking you to do that you are reluctant to do? Here's the thing. You've had two weeks to respond to that. But the word of the Lord is coming around a second time. Maybe week one, it was God was working in your heart for your marriage. And hey, we need to go to counseling. Let's go. Hey, it's been two weeks. Go. The word of the Lord's coming around a second time. Do the counseling. The word of the Lord's coming around a second time. Maybe it's praying with your kids before they go to bed. The word of the Lord is coming around a second time. I wonder who, who or what is waiting on the other side of your obedience. Because in a room this large, we all work in different places. We all live in different parts of the city. We all, all, the students in the room, you go to different schools, different universities. Who is waiting on the other side of your obedience that says, hey, I need to hear a word from the Lord. I need to hear the hope and the life that is in Jesus. I'm waiting waiting for you to come around the second time. That's the last thing. Number five, the second chance is because God wants to use you. That God still wants to use you. 
You might have messed up the first time, but God still has a plan and you are in it. In it. What Nineveh is waiting for you. What was it the first time around when that word of the Lord came and said, hey, I want you to impact kids. I want you to impact the next generation. I want you to go serve in City Hills kids. And you had that Jonah moment. Oh, I got my own kids. And they're bad. Those kids are wild up there. Praise God for our new space. I don't know about serving in kids. But what kid is waiting on the other side of your obedience? Because last Sunday, we first started 21 Days of Prayer, Pastor Jake passed out these cards. He said, what am I believing God for? And kids, not middle schoolers, not high schoolers, kindergarten through fifth grade, kids are writing on these cards. Pray for me. Pray for my dad because he's in prison. And kids are writing about their addictions. Not middle school and high school. Kids, elementary school. And they're writing, pray for my sister who ran away and we don't know where she's at. We're talking about kids. And the reason... What God is asking you is because we all go through life experiences and we we have pain and we have hurt and we don't understand why, but God wants to put purpose to your pain. And he says, you know what it's like to have a father in prison. So you can see that boy and you can say, hey, I know you don't have a father around, but I can be the person you look up to. I can be the person that disciples you. I can be the person who loves you. And the word's coming around to somebody and saying, hey, I want you to serve in students in middle and high school. You're like, my goodness, no way. That's so hard. I wouldn't know what to say. I wouldn't know what to do. Jonah had a seven-word sermon. You don't have to say a lot. You just have to show up. And there's middle school and high school students that are wondering who they are and questioning their identity. Am I a boy? Am I a girl? Well, the culture says I can do this and the culture says I can do that. And, my, and everybody else is going to affirm this. But what does God say? And they're saying, hey, I need somebody who can speak into my life. I need somebody who's going to be obedient to the word because the word's coming around a second time. And there's somebody that's waiting on the other side of your obedience. This North Auditorium that we're doing for the 10 o'clock. It's not some thing. Thing so that we can feel real special about ourselves because we're growing our 10 o'clock service and it's going to get, and I praise God and hope that's what happens. But you know what's going to happen over there in the North Auditorium is hundreds of students on Wednesday nights are going to go over there and find hope in life in Christ. And we got plans to use it on Friday nights after football games that unchurched kids can come and they can get fed and they can be loved on. Why? Because there's somebody, there's a Nineveh that's waiting on the other side of your obedience. And there's a second word coming right now saying, hey, I've called you to make a difference. I've called you to make an impact. We can't do it on our own. Hey, uh, we're talking next gen real quick. I'm the next generation pastor. Pastor Corey's over students. Jake's over kids. That's three people. If we're talking about, well, why don't you do it? That's three. You know how many people one, one person can, can disciple truly maybe three to five? Jesus discipled 12 and we're not Jesus. On an average city night, we have about 100 students that come into this place. That means 85% of the students are waiting on somebody else that can disciple them and say, I'll show up to your football game and I'll show up when nobody else will show up because they're waiting on somebody. The city's waiting on you. And you say, oh, that sounds good. You're just a little sales pitch for the church. No, that's not the point. God needs you. We don't need you. God needs you to make a difference because people need you. Because the second chance is so other people can receive a second chance because you've experienced mercy and you've experienced grace because you're in here today. And if you haven't, can I tell you, we serve a God who pours out mercy and grace. He wants to heal you today and forgive you of your sins and turn you around so that you can go out and say, this is what God has done in my life. And there's a second chance and there's a second word 
so that you can be the person who gives out second chances because there's a world that is dying and lost and it's not good enough just to come into a holy huddle and say oh this worship's good it feels good that's fine but they don't feel it maybe you're watching online can i tell you you can make a difference the holy huddle's great i love church i'm as churchy as they come i bleed church i love church but can i tell you there's a world out there that needs you and maybe it's you bring them in here that's fine bring them into this place but you don't have to wait it's the word that comes a second time so that we can give second chances as well can we stand together in this place Jesus Lord we pray Lord that we would be obedient to what you have called us to do that maybe there's somebody in this place today that needs to respond to the word the first time that they feel a stirring in their heart by the power of the Holy Spirit can I tell you just respond to that today just cry out to God say God you you see me Lord I turn from my sins I make you my Lord and my God Lord fill me with your Holy Spirit I choose today to trust in you and follow after you whatever that looks like whatever that means I'm going to be be obedient the first time and then there's another prayer today it's a second time around word it's somebody that's sitting there today and you knew what you felt in week number one when God when Pastor Brandon said what is your Nineveh and you felt it you felt the word and the word is coming around now and you're going to your prayer today is yes Lord Lord, whatever you say, that there's people on the other side of my yes that need you, so I say yes. That I say yes to whatever you've called me to. Lord, that I know that if you've called me to it, that you are responsible for it. And so I thank you for what you're going to do in the lives of these people today, in the lives of these families today, in the lives of our children today. Lord, I thank you for it, and I praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, our prayer partners are going to come front, come up front here there's any area of your life that you would like to be prayed for i don't know if you need a miracle if you just need just prayer we would love to pray for you but if 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 you're not comfortable coming out to your seat could you just do me a favor and 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 just whatever it is that god has put on your heart during this message whatever he's been stirring in your your heart over this last 20 or, or during our 21 days of prayer would you just say yes Will you just agree with it right now and believe in faith that God is going to work it out? Lord, do what only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen.
So Jesus, we thank you that you are a God who gives second chances. Lord, we thank you that you are on the throne. Lord, that all of our anxieties and cares we can cast onto you and that you are a good father and rain down perfect gifts upon us. Lord, I just pray, Lord, for every person in this place, God, that you are calling, Lord, to a higher purpose, that you're calling us higher, Lord, to something great. Lord, I pray, Lord God, Lord, for obedience. Lord, I pray for empowerment. Lord, I pray, Lord God, for families in this place, for marriages in this place, for kids in this place, Lord, that are going to school tomorrow. Lord God, that they would be empowered by your spirit, Lord, to make a difference in their schools. Lord God, that they, Lord, would be someone who goes and is a missionary to their school, Lord God, for the universities. Lord, I just pray right now, Lord God, Lord, that we would take the second chance, the second opportunity by your mercy and grace, Lord God, and that we would go out, Lord, and we, Lord God, would do what you have called us to do. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place today. Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what your Holy Spirit is doing in this house. And we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can we just give God a hand clap of praise all across this place? Amen. The Lord is good.